the all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present, eternal Father, the source of all goodness, truth, and love, who has manifested himself in his Son, Jesus Christ, for the purpose of redemption, and as the Holy Ghost, for the purpose of intervening in the lives of people. We believe in the divine inspiration of the scriptures, and that the original manuscripts of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible are the word of God to them his people, and that the scriptures we possess today are the sufficient rules of faith and practice and the final authority for truth and salvation. We believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ, which declares him to be the only begotten Son of God, who was born of a virgin, and who lived to show us the glorious presence of God as the Savior who was crucified and died on the cross in our sins to be the supreme sacrifice for sin. He was buried in a tomb, but rose again the third day as a scripture foretold, and is now exalted as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, as God manifested in the flesh. He is true God and true man, and he draws all the fullness of the Godhead body. We believe in the original apostolic plan of salvation, proclaimed on the day of Pentecost, on the third day of the New Testament Church, which includes faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, sincere repentance, water baptism by immersion in the name of Jesus Christ, and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, with the joyous experience of speaking supernaturally in other tongues, just as the believer did in the first century. We believe in living the life of holiness, both inwardly and outwardly, as a result of the working of God's grace in us. For the word of the Lord declares that all who name the name of Christ should depart from sin and separate themselves from the evil practices of this present age. We believe in the practice of genuine Christianity through love for God and people, prayer, obedience to the word of God, our close worship and expressive praise, sharing our faith, commitment to our marriage and parents and families, and those willing to help one another in time of need, honesty and diligence in our appointments, honor and respect for our government as it submits to the divine plan for human society, and the dedication of our time, talent, and treasure to advance the kingdom of God on earth. We believe in a local and universal church established by our Lord Jesus Christ in special fellowship for all who believe, because the spiritual community ordained for worship, fellowship, and service to God and people, of which every believer must become a part. We are the body of Christ in the world today, displaying the same righteous power and spiritual gifts experienced by the early church. We believe in the return of Jesus Christ, that in order to bring our Lord's return to the time of the trumpet, the world will return to hiding Christ, and those who now live in Christ will rise to meet him in the air and be with him forever. We believe in the judgment of all people, and the wicked shall receive their punishment, and the righteous shall receive their reward. We believe in the ultimate triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen.
thank you for reconciling us to you, O oh God. We thank you for everything that you do, O oh God. We continue, we continue to glorify you, let you know, glorify your name, O oh God. We continue to call on you, God, because we know that when we call on the name of Jesus, things must change, things must move, O oh God. We thank you for everything that you do. We continue to call on you, O oh Lord. We ask that you come in here into, into this place, O oh God. We ask that you, we welcome you into us in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless this service in the name of Jesus. We ask that you do what you have to do. We make room for you, O oh God. We ask that you continue to make yourself present and known to us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything that you do, Lord. We cannot thank you enough, O oh God. We continue to thank you. We thank you for all the mercies you have shown us, O oh God. The traveling mercies you have shown us, O oh God. We thank you for the times you made ways for us, O oh God, when we thought there was no way, Lord. We thank you for everything that you do, O oh God. We ask that you continue to do the things that you do, Lord. We ask that you have your way, O oh Lord. We align ourselves with your will in the name of Jesus. We ask that you continue to lead us where we should go, O oh God. Lead us on the path of righteousness for your name's sake in the name of Jesus. We ask that you walk with us, O God, in the name of Jesus. We ask that we do not leave you, O God. We ask that we continue to hear your voice as you call up to us, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you do, Lord. We ask that you bless the service. We ask that you bless the speaker in the name of Jesus. We ask that you make ways for us as you have done before in the name of Jesus. We look to you and we glorify you. We ask that you do what you have to do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Someone says thank you for lifting.
that the time that maybe someone here, you may have a song or a prayer or you want to give you a chance to do so.
You're supposed to be there at seven. If you show up at nine, I don't think you understand what you have. People just think they can get away with it. You know, murder. And the guy was doing religious. He would come late every day. Take a break. He would go for an hour. It's only 15 minutes. You can't count. So now, he sits up there. He sits up there. And they call him to the desk. Now, me, he ain't got eyes. I'm one of my assistant managers.
So always pray to come to your children. Try to, again, the routine of praying in the morning uh, and praying at night for the one while they go to sleep. Because Satan is out here, he's working. He's working to grab our youth. So I just tell you all the parents, pray over your children so that God can protect your kids. And that's all I have to say. <laughs>
hindering him from coming into the church. Something is binding him, like he's struggling. Like yes, he got a job, but it's like it's like he's he's, he's struggling on, on what's going on as far as work and his marriage and everything in church. I just want you guys to lift him up in prayer. I, I keep hearing it over and over. I keep telling Sister Denise, tell him come, come, come to church. I don't know what's what's hindering him like this. You know, Satan trying to keep hindering him and hindering him. And he loves the Lord. I can see it in his eyes. I can see it in his heart that he really want to come. But something is keep blinding him from not coming. Satan trying to keep him away from us. So I just wanted to um, lift Brother Jamal up in prayer, you know, to cover him with his family, his wife. She can come as well, you know. Just bless him, bless him with his new job that he has, that he's working, you know, that he can still come to church. You know, he's trying to figure out how to help his family, but something is really hindering him, Lord God. And, and I just want you guys to please lift him up in, in prayer because I, I keep hearing it. to uh, thank you for this morning, Lord God. Lord God, we have uh, Brother Jamal that is in need, Lord God. We know that he loves you, Lord. He loves you dearly, Lord God. He wants to come into the church and worship you, Lord God. I ask that you continue being with Brother Jamal, Lord God. I ask you that you um, bless him up everywhere he goes, Lord God. Even when he's at work, Lord God. Satan is keep trying to attack him, even as he works, Lord God. He keeps sending people his way to harm him and hurt him, Lord God. I ask that you let him know that, that you are here for him, Lord God, that, that you have not forgotten about him, Lord God. Oh, Lord God, I ask that you bless his wife, Lord Jesus, Lord God. <clears throat> Please bless her womb, Lord Jesus, because um, she, they, they want to have a fam start a family, Lord God. You know the day, the hour, and the time when is the right moment for them to start their family, Lord Jesus. Only you can do it, Lord God. I ask that you bless her, bless her, her, her mother, Lord God. Talk to her, Lord Jesus. Let Jamal be the head of his family, Lord God, because you said that, um, that he's the head of his family, Lord Jesus. Let him lead his family where they're supposed to be led, right here in the church, Lord God. I ask you all of this in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Put your arms in heaven and earth, hallowed with me thy name forevermore. You are the Lord, you are the Holy One. We give you glory and the honor to you.
we were planning on trying to make sure we could go and see David for Sight and Sound on October 15th. Uh, that has been sold out. So we're looking now at December 17th. Um, there's maybe only like 1,000 tickets left, but they do seem to go very fast for the 3 p.m. showing. So um, please. Uh, sight and sound, David. Uh, they don't have tickets for the October date, but we're um, planning on trying to go on December 17th. On the 17th at 3 p.m., they right now have a thousand tickets left, but those tickets go fast. So if you're wanting to go, please make sure you go on the, the site and buy your tickets. Lastly, for those that are part of the learning all the books of the Bible, you know your age groups, you know all the books that you have to know for July 31st, which I forgot to mention, July 31st is our youth service. Amen. Amen. So excited about that. We're having Brother Braylon's going to be coming and bringing forth the word, so we're really excited. And also on that day, we're going to have to see how many of you have remembered the books of the Bible that you're supposed to be remembering. And I'm giving out prizes. So if you have them, I will give you a prize. If you have them memorized, I'll give you a prize. If you don't have them memorized, I am not giving out prizes. So oh, yes, make sure. Out very, very nice prizes. I give out nice prizes. So make sure you have them. Amen. So for, uh, I think it's below six, it's the first ten books up to age 12 or 13. can't remember right now, but you have to know the Old Testament and everyone up to 18 only. <laughs> you have to know Old and New Testament. Um, I believe that's all the announcements I have, Pastor. Thank you so much, lady. Thank God for the people of God. Amen. Thank God for all of you. It's love that hand. Amen. 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 Thank God for the people of God for with us throughout the course of this service. A few brief announcements um, that I want to make. Um, can we all just clap our hands and recognize our sister Gianna today? Amen. 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 to have something for our young people during our time of intercessory prayer between 10 and 10.30, etc. And when I arrived there, or shortly thereafter, I saw Sister Gianna down there with the young people teaching them and instructing them out of the Word of God from the beginning in Genesis chapter 1. They mentioned she had an aggressive goal of doing Genesis chapter 1 through 3 in 30 <laughs> minutes. That didn't happen, but I'm not surprised. Amen. May the spirit of me be upon you that you'll take a long time to. No, but... <laughs> No, but I thank God so much for that. We thank God for the young people, amen, that were part of that. Please invite all the young people, amen, to participate in this. Because it truly really is a blessing. It truly really is a blessing. Um, I also want to um, recognize um, Brother James and Brother uh, Mike. Mike, as I call him, and his Facebook's pop off. I want to recognize them. Thank God so much for that. They put together my, my new bookshelf, amen. <laughs> my bookshelf, let's get the box six. So we thank God um, so much for that. And then I also want to thank God for our sister Angelica. Put your hands together for her. And uh, she now has responsibility for leading our Tuesday night prayer sessions. Amen. And I thank God um, for her, for her diligence in that space. And certainly thank God um, so much for, for that as well. Um, I don't know, do most of you have any announcements with respect to the men's team or the set team? The men's team. <laughs> Yeah, all I know is that y'all are one next week. The brand new. So, Wilson will be in touch with you. Yes, there is a rehearsal. For either one of those uh, main students, I believe if the children's group is rehearsing song as well. Is that correct? Yes, yes. All right. But that's for the fifth Sunday, or is that for? For Youth Sunday. For Youth Sunday. All right. Thank God. Amen. 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 Let's put our hands together for that. Amen. Amen. And so I do want to invite you to plug into uh, one of the many existing and newly created ministries slash auxiliaries here at Georgia. There are a host of ways to be actively involved, and we need your help. Say, we need your help. Yeah. 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 If you have an interest or an idea, please connect um, with one of our ministry leaders. Also, my weekly remember, reminder with respect to Realm, if you are a member of GFG, my expectation is that you will actually sign up. Um, for Realm, it is for your advantage, amen. You see all those wonderful announcements you have on the announcement board? We are not psychic, we buy in that spirit, amen. And the prophetic is not keeping in that strong today. And so the announcements that are there with respect to your, your anniversaries, your birthdays, etc., that comes by you filling out your membership profile, amen, on our church management system. 
a report has been run through the change reports management system, and that's how we are able to actually know when your birthdays are, all that kind of stuff, and get all that kind of stuff um, together. So again, I want to encourage you to do that. That's also how you are able to see your record of giving um, throughout the course of the year. Just a whole lot of information there. We have not even scratched the surface on the use of that technology. Um, we want to encourage everybody to be a part of it. Um, so that way, as your group leaders perhaps may use different tools, et cetera, you'll already be in the system to do it. We can do everything from volunteer sign-up lists to job uh, postings to everything. You can even apply for a job um, for the, through the church, through our church management system, right? So all of that is right there, right at your disposal. Um, we are planning for growth, and we are therefore trying to have solutions that are scalable. Right now, um, for many of us, we have to do sign up for the bell and all those sorts of things, the, the church bell. Amen. That's our brother Benny. Amen. He, he collects the list. Y'all do sort of ad hoc. As we continue to grow, that becomes more and more difficult to manage. And we'll be asking you to sign up for that via the website, via our realm. Amen. We'll have a listing for this. So, again, um, thank God for all of you. Thank God for your attention during these announcements. I believe. That's all. The, oh, once again, want to remind you, as you know, next week, grand opening service, please feel free to invite everybody that you can. There will be food served at the service. <laughs> Which is my final accolade and thanks. Um, for a long time, Lady and I have done a lot of work in ministry. We really, really have. It's been 21 years for us at this point, 20 years of pastoral ministry. Um, at this point. So in 2001, we have started 2001. Um, but I am so thankful to God. Lady and I were here last week, and um, y'all were making preparations. And I'm telling you, all the food is prepared. I mean, in terms of de deciding food, deciding the protocols, in terms of the, our leadership tables, in terms of the, the to-go food process, all of it has been ironed out, and I didn't have to do a thing. And I don't think I'm cooking either. Yeah. You cooking anything, lady? Yeah, we ain't cooking nothing either. So we thank God for you, amen, for handling it all. Because last week was we just left, we're like, no, we did last week before. Yo, we were able to leave the church, leave y'all here. We drove on our merry way. Amen. I like this church. This is wonderful. So again, we thank God for you. Thank you so much for stepping up. We knew that this day would come. And we're excited for what God is going to continue to use each and every one of you um, to do. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. You're my father's children. And I also want to recognize, amen, our guests today. But they're not guests. They've been here before. Amen. So you're not guests. You're family now. <laughs> and we appreciate it. And we love you so very, very much. Amen. And this time, I believe the praise and worship team is coming back. Is that right? Amen. Praise and worship team is coming with five, one final selection. God bless you in Jesus' name.
And so I'm thanking God for the newness, and I'm thanking God for the growth, and I'm thanking God for the power, and I'm thanking God for everything that he is doing. Um, should the Lord say the same? Somebody say, should the Lord say the same? Because he might say something different. But should the Lord say the same? Amen. I'm going to be coming before you briefly from the book of God, don't laugh already. Genesis <laughs> chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. You know we have guests, unofficial guests are supposed to act like I preach short. That way they come back again. Amen. Genesis chapter 11. <laughs> chapter 11. Amen. Genesis chapter 11 and verses 27 through 28 and then verses 31 through 32. Amen. It's now currently about 1233 for those of you that are wondering. And if the Lord says the same, I'm going to be done by one o'clock. Somebody say thank you, Lord. I have goals. I have goals. See, they encourage me. See, now if I don't do it, it's because those that did not encourage and believe. I told you that they are miracles. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say wait a while. And we'll wait for you, but my time does not start. I will leave until you have it. Amen. Genesis chapter 11, looking at verse 27, it says, this is the account, reading from the contemporary English version, this is the account of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran was the father of, what do you know? Lot. I remember that name, Lot. But Haran died in Ur of the Chaldeans, the land of his birth, while his father, Terah, Terah was still living, y'all. You see this in the text. Um, one day, Terah took his son, Abram, uh, Abram, his daughter-in-law, Sarai, his son, Abraham, Abram's wife, and his grandson, Lot, his son, Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. He was headed for the land of Canaan, but they stopped at Haran and settled there. Terah lived for 205 years and died while still in Haran. Sobering text. If I could speak for a couple of moments, speak from this topic. Tell your neighbor, don't settle. Don't settle. Don't Come on, settle. tell another neighbor, don't settle. Don't. don't. Hallelujah, don't. <laughs> Hallelujah, don't settle. Come on, clap your hands and give God your don't. Don't you dare settle. This is not. The time is to say, it's not the phrase to say, oh, God says, don't, don't sell. There was an objective in mind. They were moving. You know that that, that terminology, Canaan, makes sense. It's familiar. Canaan was the promised land. And perhaps if you were not the biblical scholars that you are today, you might not have realized that the place where Terah was on his way to was the exact same place that eventually God was going to lead Abraham. Perhaps if you were not the biblical scholars that you are today, you might not recognize that even after 400 years of slavery in Egypt, that God will lead Moses and eventually through Joshua, the people of God, back to Canaan. Canaan was promised, but somehow something happened in Terah, the Bible says, settled in Haran. I want to help somebody this morning not to settle in Haran. I want to help somebody not to get stuck. I want to help somebody to move forward past this place called. I struggled with Haran because it said that Noah, that, 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 that Terah had some sons, and one of the sons was named Haran, and Haran is the one that died. And when they're traversing through the land, they happen to come into a land that's named the same. It's Terah's son that had died, and Terah gets stuck in a place. Have you ever been stuck in a place? Have you ever settled for less than what it was that you knew that there was a plan, you knew there was an agenda, you knew there was a goal, but something in you got comfortable, and what's that word? Settled, you settled. I, I, I was remembering um, a, a story. 
from one of many books that I had read. And this book I had read during that time period, we talked about last week, you know, when I, when I didn't have the job, I was struggling during that time period, struggling spiritually, trying to you know, maintain faith. And I was reading this book, and it was a book that was written by Pastor Osteen. And in the book, he had a story. So I'm going to steal his story because I like the story. And it says, a famous mountain climbing resort in the Swiss Alps caters to businesses that encourage their employees to hike up the mountain trails together. Um, the goal is to build camaraderie and to teach teamwork. Although it is about an eight hour trek to the summit, anyone with normal walking ability can ascend to the top. Each morning, the hikers gather at the base of the mountain for a pep talk before, be before starting the climb. Usually the group is so excited, they can hardly wait to head up the slopes to have a group picture taken and to celebrate their victory, which will happen when they reach the top. Y'all follow me? They hike for several hours before taking a break. Approximately halfway up the mountain stands a quaint alpine restaurant. Yeah, restaurant. Ain't that nice? Walk around. Nice restaurant. Halfway up, stop at the restaurant. About noon, the weary hikers trudge into the restaurant, peel off their hiking gear, and plop down by the fireplace to have a cup of coffee or drink some hot chocolate and eat their lunch. That sounds nice, doesn't it? With the mountain as their backdrop, the hikers savor the warm, cozy, picturesque setting. Interestingly, after they are full and comfortable, less than half the hikers choose to continue climbing to the top of the mountain. It isn't because they aren't able. It isn't because the climb is too difficult. Their reluctance to continue is simply because they are satisfied with where they are. They lose their drive to excel, to explore new horizons, to experience vistas they never previously imagined possible. They have tasted a bit of success, and they think, this is good enough. But God has so much more in store. I done preached already. Y'all be shocked with y'all. But I'm not done. God has more in store. But isn't that just like many of us? We start with great aspirations. We have bought into the notions. We have bought into the ideologies, the ideas. We have saw, we've seen our dreams. We have perhaps even mapped um, our approach, how we would get there. We begin to document our dreams. We have dreams. We share perhaps our dreams with trusted loved ones. And it is not that we don't see progress towards our dreams, but sometimes the greatest obstacle to the achievement of our goals is progress. Because when I did not achieve any of it, when it seemed impossible, yeah, my faith was strong. I was going to get every single thing. But somehow, when starting along the trajectory, when starting along the journey, a little bit of progress sometimes make us, makes us say, you know what? Maybe this is good enough. And we begin to settle for far less than what we were originally intended to have. Anybody in this room can admit, it's just a few of us today, anybody willing to admit that there have been times in my life where I have settled for far less than what I was capable of. It was not lack of ability, it was not lack of intelligence, it was not lack of capability. I simply stopped. I simply settled. Perhaps you blamed it on tiredness. Perhaps you blamed it on weariness. Perhaps you called it procrastination. But whatever it was, you decided to stop. And if you're honest, many of us would have to admit, I don't have anybody else to blame but my I take an introspective examination. I recognize that it was me. It was me. I had the tools. It was all lined up. And the, the fact that I made it this far was actually proof of the fact that I could actually make it the rest of the way. Now, I know that I'm really old school, and I come from a, a, a church of really old songs, and 
One of the songs we would sing, well, they would sing, and I'd sing along was, Lord, I'm running, trying to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. Then they say, it won't do, Lord. It won't do. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. That I'm trying to make it to one hundred. And I fear, I, I'm concerned that the issue with many of us is that while we make the steps in the right direction, we do not allow God to complete all that he really wants to do in our lives. Anybody can honor and recognize that today, that there's oftentimes a disparity, a difference between what God has called us to, what God has shown us, and what we are satisfied to maintain. He takes some of the base out of this. I think that might help us with the hum. Um, and so this is the struggle um, that we have. I, I, I want to pause, though, and consider these main characters because they bother me. I'm concerned about them. It, it's a struggle for me. It is not the terror lacks drive. It is not the terror lacks vision. He has both of those things. It's not even the terror lacks life. Do you ever look at the text and why, wonder why is the text written the way that it is? I, I, and that's what I began to struggle with. It's, it says, they stopped at Heron and settled there. Terror lived for 205 years. And yet he died while still in heaven. For 205 years. It's not that I didn't have time. It's not that there wasn't time. It's just that I stopped. It wasn't. Here's the thing. It does not even say that it was because there were enemies there. Because, you know, when we try to get the promised land a number of years later, we got all these Ikes that we're fighting against, the Canaanites, the Jebusites, the Hittites, etc. That's not even that. It's just that I didn't do it. I stopped. The text says this. It's very interesting. It's a text that makes many of us dance and shout, and yet it's a text that is one that um, brings tremendous, I don't want to say condemnation, but certainly an introspective um, responsibility to us. It says, be not weary in well doing. For in due season, the promise of the text is that you shall reap. But there is a conditional clause that comes at the end of that verse that messes it all up that says, if you faint. The law of seed and har seed time and harvest is in full effect. Such that if I plant, if I sow, if I invest towards kingdom endeavors, and further beyond that, he that has begun a good work, he shall perform to the day of Jesus Christ. All the power of heaven and earth is at my disposal and is rallying behind me, and the only thing that can stop me is if I stop. The only thing that can stop me is if I quit. The only thing that can stop me is if I decide this is enough, I'm good, I don't want to do this. Any more. I think this is the moment where we'll start preaching. Oh gosh. 12, 15, oh, sorry. Michael Cox is 12 15, is that right? Where'd that come from? <laughs> Praise his name. <laughs> you know what happened? I screenshot a scripture, and where I screenshot it said 1215. Well, 1215 is one of the most mistakes. 1215. Keep looking at this. <laughs> Praise him! I received that word. Received that. I promise you, 12 15, that's what it says. I am in a position, I'm in a place now. Well, I'm trying to be very careful, very mindful um, that we do not allow success. And you've got to be very mindful so you do not allow success to immobilize you. You've got to get to a place where you do not allow yourself to be tempted to stop at anything less than what God has promised you. Sister Denise, as I often hear you testify, you give thanks unto God with respect to your children, etc. And as we begin to see God doing things, we need a boldness. So I think that sometimes um, we, we, we think, I don't want to ask for too much because I don't want to seem ungrateful. I don't want to bankrupt heaven. You know, if I ask for too much stuff, then, you know, maybe I, I, I don't want to be uh, greedy, as it were. 
But, but, but I am convinced of this is the reason for every parent that's in the building that when God starts working on your children, that's not the time to stop and say, oh, thank God for that and go and no, That's the time to press in until every one of my children. You've got to keep going. You've got to keep moving forward. You've got to maintain the momentum. You've got to keep that there's a, 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 an expression, a secular expression, but let me say it, all right? Let me say it, but you got my back, brother Bashir. They say, keep that same energy. How y'all know those worldly expressions? They say, keep that same. And you've got to keep that same energy when you make it halfway up the mountain as you did when you first started out so that you'll be able to complete the assignment. Hallelujah. The race is not given to the quick, but the battle to the strong. It's not necessarily good, but it's a combination of that. But he to him that endures to he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. There's something to be said for this thing called endurance. Something to be said for this thing that allows you just to keep on going. Many of us start well but we struggle to finish well. How many unfinished projects do you have? How many incomplete dreams do you have? How many prayer requests did you abandon? Did you just leave? Excuse me. Did you just leave hanging out there? How many hopes and promises of God did you just say, you know what? It's all right. It's all good. I'm fine. It'll be all right. And you just moved on and just let it go. How many of the blessings of God were chasing you? And right when they were about to catch you, you said, never mind. Where would you be if only you had not stopped? What happened that made you stop praying the prayers that you were praying? When you were devoted to God and you were holding on to the horns of the altar and you said, no matter what, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give it until. But somehow the definition of until changed for you. And you decided that you were going to walk away from it all and just settle. And you said, let the chips fall where they may. Whatever will be, will be. The devil is a liar. It's not whatever will be, what will be. It's holding my to this family because you'll understand from this text that it does not just impact Terah, it also impacts Abram. It impact, even after his name is changed to Abraham, he still has to deal with the struggle of his father settling. Terah, if only you had gone further, there were some battles I would not have had to fight. Sarah, if only you had gone further, there's some struggle. See, because the progress is not for Tara, because Tara's going to die at some point anyway. But if Tara had gotten further, it would have done something for Abraham. What the enemy is fighting against is not just you. It's about those that are coming after you. And if you would just keep on fighting and keep on believing, God will do something. That will impact the generations to come. We don't do what we do in terms of occupation. At this point, lady, it's really funny. I could sell the house that we have. This is true. I was this a number of years ago. We could technically sell the house that we have, get a much smaller house, and live real comfortable the rest of our lives. In theory. But lady has this thought that she wants more. And I recognize that the more isn't really for us because I've pretty much done all the stuff that I wanted to do. But now it's a matter of what position will my children be? Because it's big, the decisions that I make are bigger than me. It's about what the next generation is going to experience. I talk to her all the time about the fact that we, we, we have a vision. We want to get some more land. We're getting acres of land. At least 10. 
But it's not just a, I may never live to build it, but the next generation of GFM, yeah, if they think we want to build from the ground, we want to have the land to do it, to build the campus, to build the school, to build everything we want to build. The but what happens, Sister Jessica, if we settle down? What happens if we say, hey, hey, I feel God? What happens if we settle now? What happens if we settle now? So, Tara, he can see it. Here's the sad part. You may not have known this if you didn't study the biblical geography, if you didn't bring out the Bible atlas. But here's the funny, ironic part, that when they left Ur, and they were on their way to Canaan, when they stopped here in Haran, it was literally halfway there. And you tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. you are halfway there. You are halfway there. You are half the biggest secret is that you felt like you weren't going nowhere. But you didn't even realize that you were already half. Because the devil didn't want you to know that you were already half. Let me check my time in the sports for two. This is the wrong part, y'all. But you were halfway there. Hallelujah. And I'm disappointed that so often we've thrown in the towel just when. We have made the halfway point. Already. You know how hard it is to get started? Anybody ever ride a bicycle? This is my imagination because I never really learned how to ride a bicycle very well. Too late now, Brother Bishop. It's too late. Now. <laughs> Ain't gonna skin my knees up this day. They try and get them new stuff. But what I imagine. Is that the most difficult part oftentimes, depending on the terrain that you're on and the, and the inclines, etc. Perhaps the most difficult part is getting started, but once you get your glide, once you get in the groove, anybody took physics? What's, your, what's that? It's this thing called inertia that the hardest thing is for me just to get started, and then an object that's in motion will do what? Not so smart. Stay in motion unless acted upon by an outside outside not so smart. An outside force. And so all I had to do was get it in motion. And as long as I don't mess it up, I was already halfway. Was already halfway. But I let somebody convince me to stop the progress that I was making. I let somebody convince me that, oh no, you don't deserve that. That's too much for you. You don't, and you allow somebody, somebody who didn't even have a vested interest in your success to begin to prophesy to you about what was possible in your life and what was appropriate. But the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I am what God says I am. And I can have whatever God says. I'm concerned because I know that although though that the text says that Tara died, I know that Tara is not by himself, but there's some Tara's that are sitting in this room right now. Uh, they have begun the journey, they have begun uh, on a good course, but all of a sudden the enemy has begun whispering in your ears uh, and said, No, no, it don't take all that. No, no, you don't have to do that. No, be sad. You got that. Just be satisfied with that. No, no. I, 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 if God enabled me to see it, God is not just teasing me. I don't know what kind of God you serve, but if God shows it to me, if God ever lets me see it, if God ever lets it come within a purview of my faith, my faith will give me access to what is beyond my reach. It does not
your rebellion disqualifies you from the authority that God wants to give you. How many parents are in here? How many parents want to give your children responsibility? Right? No, no. Most of us don't want to be taken care of every single day, but our dream, our goal, is to give our children responsibility. Does that make sense to anybody? However, how do we prove they're ready for responsibility? By their ability to follow rules, exercise discipline and restraint. And once they have proven that they are obedient, that we can trust them, then we give them more And so how does God, the Heavenly Father, give you the responsibility that he wants to give you? First, he proves you through circumstances and situations to see whether you can be trusted to do what he wants you to do. Basically, to act the way that he would act. Because right? really, it's not about the stuff. It's not about the car as well. I just want to be sure that if I let you drive my car, you'll treat it with the same respect that. And when you don't do that, then I have concern that you're not going to properly take care of what I have given you. And what I have given you as a blessing can become a curse if you don't know how to responsibly care. It's not that God doesn't want you to have. It's about whether you have proven your ability to handle what he wants you to have. And what God wants you to have is responsibility and access and provision. But if you keep stopping halfway, if you undecided, if you're not sure, if you're not, you know what this thing is called? The thing that calls me to go halfway and not finish is something called commitment. You know what the difficulty in our generation is? Too many people don't have commitment. We don't commit to a thing. This is what I want. This is what I want. I want Canaan. But if Haran comes along and it's all right, I'm going to stop from Haran. Make sense to anybody? I'm going to settle for this. I'll take it. No, but Canaan is so much greater. It's a land or oh, full of milk and honey. It's great. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, but I'm good. Learn to be settled in things that I, I live so far beneath my privilege because I'm not allowing God to really open up and expand my. You think prayer is for, is for God. Prayer is not for God. Prayer, God does not learn anything from your prayers. Think about it. Don't just believe me. Think about it. If God's omniscient, He's not learning anything from your prayers. God never goes, oh, I didn't know that. Wow. That happened. Really? God does not change. Because God does not change. God does not get new information. God does not learn anything. Because that which omniscient cannot learn. That makes sense. You learned because there's something that you did not know. But God already knows that he cannot learn new information. That makes sense to him, God. Now, there's some anthropomorphic terminology that's used in the Bible to help us relate to God. So it's like it might seem like God has changed his mind. But the truth of the matter is that God knew he was going from the very, very beginning. Right? I'll help you. Genesis chapter 6. It says weird stuff like, and God repented of something he'd been made man. Like, oh, God knows what happened. Not really. The truth of the matter is that the text says that he has slain the lamb from the very foundation of the world. God already knew and had a plan to address it. Even before the, before the foundation of the world, before Adam got a chance to even mess up, God had already designed a plan to accommodate it. God does not learn anything new. It's me that learns in prayer. It's me that changes in prayer. It's me that gets to learn how to flex my spiritual muscles in prayer. Prayer is, is, prayer is training me. Prayer is telling me how to utilize and to exercise my faith. Pray, prayer is trying to show me uh, what, what is possible. Prayer is trying to show me uh, now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Prayer is trying to help me to break out of the limitations of my own mind. Prayer is trying to take me back. See, we, we glorify our minds so much. Like, I'm smart. No, no. Prayer is trying to show me how smart I am. Oh, I got wisdom. I got common sense. Prayer is trying to show me how dumb I 
really in. And when I really, really get into prayer, I take all the stuff that I think I heard, all the stuff I think I know, and I throw it before the feet of Jesus, and I say, God, this is like absolutely nothing. God, show me all over again what you want me to know. God, show me what possibility really is. And God, forgive me for praying such low, small prayers when I was coming before such a great and mighty and holy and wonderful God. Now, great is the Lord and great is the praise. I wish somebody would praise the great God. You're standing. Your time is up. Told me to hold to the side and kick 
my legs back. <laughs> and I was doing that. My face went down into the floor. The water went up my nose. It was burning. It was, it's traumatized. Now you brought it up. And so the difficulty is that it's good to start. We have a place that's comfortable in water, and it differs for each of us. Some of us, you know, water. I will go to the beach, and I will. I don't want my sneakers getting too wet. Don't let my. I, they get a rubber. When that water starts coming, I'll be back in. Actually, Will see those when he was young. We were teaching him stuff. We'll start praying for the water. But I'm this far and no further. Don't come any closer. I don't want my, I don't want my feet getting wet. Now there are others of you that you know y'all y'all go out there. Like, you go to your knees or whatever. I'm saying you know, get to your waist. And my thing is the water start moving like blow it all away. But you know y'all good. You know, some of our feet are up to their neck. Some of us good to go out even further. And they have a little thing that you know how not to go too far, etc. But all of us tend to move according to our comfort. All of us tend to move according to our, all of us tend to move according to, tell your neighbor, this is the last day I'm moving according to my, you stopped halfway because it became uncomfortable. You let discomfort stop you from going all the way. Peter, this is crazy. You are literally walking on water. Yes. But I started looking at what was around me and I started sinking because of my discomfort with the circumstance the situation and I allowed that to take my eyes off the prize. All right. Y'all like Bible, right? So I don't make stuff up. He says, press towards the mark for heaven. No, no. Press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is no, no, which is in Christ Jesus. I've got to keep my eyes on him so I get the fullness of what my calling entitles me to. But if I take my eyes off of him, I will find myself falling very short of what I could have accomplished. People will celebrate me and say I did a wonderful job, but my whole life I'll know I died in heaven. Perhaps the last words, real words spoken concerning terror was that he died halfway. I feel the Holy Ghost. God don't let me die halfway. just halfway. Old folks thought I'll go with him, with him, all the way. I need to go with him all the way. I'm mindful that these kind of decisions don't generally happen just in a couple moments following the message. You've got to do some work. You've got to deal with some stuff inside of you. You've got to confront your fears. You've got to confront the things that have intimidated you. You've got to get delivered and free in this moment. And until you want what God has for you more than you want your comfort, you're going to remain stuck. You're going to remain right where you are. I'm praying. because We talk about sin a lot. Sin's not a big issue. We got blood for that. The blood can cleanse you from your sin. That's wonderful. The blood works better. But this stuck thing, you gotta deal with that. You've got to deal with that. Paul says, who has bewitched you? Like, when you get stuck, that's your thing. You've got to address the stuff that has you stuck. And you know what the problem is? You keep looking back to where you were, like, oh, look how far I am. But if you constantly keep looking back to you, you'll, you'll pat yourself on the back when you need to look ahead and say, oh no, look how much further I need to go. You need to see, you need to be looking forward.
Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He offers it and he finishes it, but you've got to be focused in order to allow him to finish in you what he wants to do. I don't want to halfway do ministry. I don't want to halfway do what I need to do for my children. I don't want to halfway meet the needs of this community. Jim, Jim, you're, you're sensing it now. You're sensing. Your hands are starting to work now. Yeah. You're starting to figure out how to make stuff happen. You're, you're doing, and God is equipping your head. But you can't stop at this yeah. level. There's some stuff that you're going, and it's great. It's fun. I am so proud of you. But some of you, you need to start shifting to the next level, which is going to be supernatural stuff. Oh, you know, really. I need you to understand that, 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 that the grace of God, when it's upon us, is not just for us to do the stuff. No, God wants to bring spirituality to the stuff. And so, whereas others say, oh, this is what we can do. Like, no, no, no. Let's pause and pray and see what happens when I work with the power of God. Okay? The text says that the Lord works with them, confirming his word with signs following. And there's a transition that's happening, Brother Bashir, that you won't just be speaking to, but he's going to give you supernatural intelligence concerning them. They're going to say, how do you know that? No, David, should be God's going to start showing you some things. I'm going to start showing you some things. It becomes very, very clear and very, very evident. But you've got to shift. There's a shifting. There's a shifting in the things of God. A shifting in the power of God. You can't limit what God wants to do. You've got to go all the way. You've come this far. You might as well go all the way now. You might as well go all the way now. You might as well go all the way now. It takes not only commitment, it takes a tenacity. I always said, I don't understand how people that are unsaved have such attitudes. Like, you're not going to tell me. Then they get saved and become docile. Never understood that. Keep that same energy. If the devil's trying to take some stuff from you, then you know what you do. You keep that same energy. You know what? Devil, you're not going to have. It's crazy. Oh, God, the devil's doing this. No, no. Devil, you're not going to have my this. You're not going to have my finances. You're not going to have my... You need to shift. You need to shift. We give up because we don't have the tenacity. We give up because somewhere along the line, we've lost our fight. We've lost Right. Tell you to get your fight back. Get your fight back. Most of us as young men growing up, growing up. Sister Denise, see me outside, get your fight back. Most of us growing up had aspirations of what we wanted to do, what we wanted to accomplish. We said, I'm going to do this. I want to do that. And then all of a sudden, I don't know. You know what happens? You, 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 you got involved in one thing and didn't know what you wanted to, then you got involved in something and you, didn't know, and you start telling yourself, you know what? It's just not worth it. And so you stop fighting because it just stops being worth the effort for you. That makes sense to anybody. Yes, yes. But that's because you think you're doing it for somebody else. Because a lot of times we're trying to make somebody else proud. <sighs> this just ain't worth it. I want to let you know today, you're not doing it for anybody else today. There's some stuff you got to do for you. You owe it to yourself to use what God has given to you. One final thing, Lord, let it be the final thing, perhaps. But if not, it's not my fault. Because they're already standing. Once they started standing, my time was up. <laughs> I get that. I change the rules. The Bible says that God divides every man according to his ability, talents. To one he gave one talent, to another he gave two, to another he gave five. The one that had two talents, he made it four. The one that had five talents, he made it what? Ten. The one that had one talent, he made it what? He ain't do nothing. 
He did absolutely nothing. And so what happens? The Lord comes back. The one, the, the one to whom he's supposed to be serving and rendering his service. He comes back and he goes to the guy who has the five times. He's like, wow, I gave you five. And look, you used your five and now you have ten. That's wonderful. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Because he used what he had to the best of his ability and he maximized it. Ask yourself, am I maximizing what God has given me? He gave to every man according to his ability. He did not give you any more than what you could handle. So if you, don't, if you don't maximize what you have, it's not because it was too much for you, because you did not properly steward what he gave to you. He went to the person that had two. Who could have said that complaint, I didn't have five of the other guy, but he did. He took the two that he had, worked with what he had, and that two became four. He maximized what was assigned to him. At the end of the day, it's not about comparing ten versus four. I've got to maximize that hand that I've been dealt. He comes to one that has one. Now, this guy had to manage five. Had a whole five to manage. And yet, with all that responsibility, he still maximizes it. This person had two to manage. And although it's not a whole lot, still managed it and got it done. You had one job. Obituary states you died. How do you get over that? And you live 205 years, and this is what you accomplished. You died in heaven. You died in heaven. End of story. Is there anybody here that does not want the chapter to close? where you are right now. God, give me another chance, but don't let this book in, because I know, I know, I'm capable of more. You need to repent to God. You do. But you also kind of need to like apologize to yourself. Because you saw yourself as so little. You allow what they said to be louder than what you knew about yourself. Why do you keep believing those lies? God gives you instructions, you don't follow them, not just because you're rebellious, but because at the end of the day, you don't have enough confidence in who God has made you to be. You can never be effective in ministry wearing a mask. You can never be effective in ministry being a counterfeit. God desires truth in the end of us. We've got to face the truth. We've got to face the truth. And the truth is that some of you guys five times, you got two times, you got one time, but you all got something. And the devil's been lying to you, telling you that what you have is not enough, it's not good, and all this kind of stuff. What you have, you got the right stuff. You've got to stop focusing on what they say. Focus on what he has given you. Focus on what he has given you. Focus on what he has given you. Then he can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now to the other one, he says, depart from me. The uh, 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 unprofitable servant. Unprofitable. Unprofitable. He has not made good on what was given to him. When God comes, he's looking for a profit, he's looking for a return on his investment. A return on his investment. He's looking for a 
return on his investment. I'm talking to folks, y'all can get yourselves ready to pray. You almost ready to pray? Try to help y'all get ready. Try to help y'all get ready. Try to help you get ready. Try to help you get ready. I'm not being rude by not opening the altar, but I know that many of you, again, you need to have some conversations with you and God by yourself. And you don't need anybody standing next to you at the altar. Trying to, you try to do your general altar, bring the altar prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. Bless my family. No, no. You need to, you need to have some honest prayer. Jesus. Yes. You need to have some confession prayer. If you need to move into another chair, another room, do what you need to do. But I wouldn't leave here without getting it together. Yes. I would not leave here without getting yourself to a place where you know that you're positioning yourself to give God a return on the investment that he has given you. I do not want to die in Haran. I don't want to die here. I can't afford to die here. Not when I've seen so much. Sister Angel, if you don't open that bakery, I'll be mad. Understand what I'm telling you? I can't afford not to go. Because we think that the blessings of God are just an optional addition. No, no. Your ministry is the things that God wants to do in your life. All right, let me help you hear what God said to Abraham. God said, I want to make your name great. That ain't just so Abraham can become popular. No, there's ministry in that. And he said, I'm going to bless you. He says, I'm going to make you a blessing. And so the blessing that God has for me, I've got to receive all of it because to the extent that I don't receive it, I can't be a blessing to somebody else. And there's somebody that came to your house and you were empty because you had not received the level of blessing you were supposed to be walking into. Okay, the Bible says, I'm telling you, the book just reads itself. The Bible says that Jesus gave a parable and there was a man and a man had come into town to visit and he went to his friend's house to get something to eat and it was late at night and he knocked on the man's door and he said, will you give me something to eat? And despite the importunity, the guy actually opens the door and gives his friend some bread. But what does it mean when you go to your friend's house who's supposed to have bread and he don't got none? What does it mean when you go to the church to go to the place of hell and there's no provision in the church? Take the sign down because we're false advertising. You need to move in the fullness of what God has for you because God ministers to everybody else based on your overflow. And if you are not overflowing in abundance, you really can't afford to give to somebody else. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to anybody? I really need to shift into God actually doing all that he wants to do in me because my ministry depends on him. Y'all almost ready to pray now? This is my next prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, you begin to open your mouth and talk to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see us, God. You see where we are. You see this journey that we've been making, God. You see, God, hallelujah, hallelujah, where we were, where we were going, oh God. You see our destination. And then you see where we stopped. You see where we gave up. You see where we threw in the towel. You saw, God, hallelujah, we said enough is enough. We said, I don't want to deal with this anymore. Father, forgive us, oh God, for half doing anything. Forgive us, God, because we didn't do it with all of our might and with all of our heart and with all of our strength. God, there's a level that you require from us. There's a level that you expect from us. And Father, forgive us for coming short of the mark. Forgive us for missing the mark, God, in the name of Jesus. God, thank you for giving us a chance to see. Thank you, Lord, for showing us the road map again. Thank you, Lord, for showing us the destination and showing us where we are and letting us know there's strength, there's power, and there's ability for me to reach, hallelujah, my goal to reach my destination. Thank you for letting me know that if I just lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset me, that I can run this race with patience. Father, I thank you for the race, and God, I'm determined to run on. I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, help me to 
tune out what I need to tune out, God. Help me, Lord, help me, God, to get over every hurdle, every barricade. In the name of Jesus, God, make my feet like cotton's feet. There's some things I need to jump over. Father, hallelujah. Let me not make stumbling blocks excuses. But Father, in Jesus' name, give me the wisdom to divert and to keep on going. In the name of Jesus, let failure not be an option in my life. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Failure is not an option. I do not accept defeat. If I'm losing, then the game is not over yet. Because the game cannot end until I win. In the name of Jesus, I feel that naughty. In the name of Jesus, Father, give me strength to confront every Goliath. In the name of Jesus, Goliath may run his mouth, but I've got five smooth stones. Hallelujah. And I'm going to use the stones and the sling that God has given me. In the name of Jesus, who is this? Hallelujah. Uncircumcised Philistine that would dare to withstand the armies of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, the enemy comes with sword and shield, but we come against him in the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, enlarge our territory. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, strengthen us for that which is to come. Father, in the name of Jesus, open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive. Father, in the name of Jesus, command the days to be good to us. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, bless our basket and bless our store. Bless us going out. Bless us coming in. Father, in the name of Jesus, the sun shall not smite us by day, nor the moon by night. Jesus, a thousand may fall on our side, and ten thousand are right there, but it shall not come nigh us, only with our eyes we behold, and see reward the wicked, because we make the Lord our habitation, hallelujah, Father in the name of Jesus, oh God, help us, oh God, help us, oh God, help us, God. Help us, oh God, to continue. Help us to continue. Help us to finish, God, in the name of Jesus. God, help us to continue. God, help us to finish. Help us to continue. Help us to finish, in the name of Jesus. God, help us, God, in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And so, God, we pray for our own minds. And we come against that give up spirit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We speak to our own souls. In the name of Jesus. And we command our souls to come into alignment with the vision that God has given us. In the name of Jesus, we command the running in our spirit in the name of Jesus that we might be able to read the vision of God and to run with it in the name of Jesus. Oh God, hallelujah! Put a running in our feet, God, put strength in our hands, God, in the name of Jesus. Give us an anointing, God, hallelujah, that we might see the full manifestation, the full manifestation of your work concerning us in the name of Jesus. God, tonight we refuse. To die simply as potential, but God, we shall actualize everything God has been spoken concerning us. Every word concerning us, it shall come to pass. In the name of Jesus, 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 the word that you've spoken to concern my life shall not return unto you, Lord. It shall not, I guarantee tonight, that God's word concerning my life will not be. prosper in this thing whereunto you have sent it. In the name of Jesus, the word is going to find a good home in me. Hallelujah. And it's going to produce some 30 and some 60 and some 100 fold. If you believe it, clap your hands. Open up your mouth. I said open up your mouth and give it a bow. Refuse to die for our hallelujah. I'm going on. I'm on my way to Canaan land. I'm on my way to Canaan land. If you don't go, I'll still go on. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. I'm 
I'm on my way, hallelujah. I'm on my way, hallelujah. Take it back, I'm on my way, hallelujah. I'm on my way, hallelujah. Walk to get the children, don't you get weary. There's a great camp meeting, there's a promise land. Hallelujah, walk together, talk together, sing together, shout together. We're walking, hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm finished, y'all. Hallelujah. Cut your hands one time if you can. So you need to watch it one more time. God says, don't settle. Don't settle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't settle. 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 Don't get stuck. Don't settle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Ray, hallelujah. 